Hi everyone, this is Jana Smakula and welcome to another Hero Arts video tutorial. This video is the second one in a new series called Color Layering with Jana. In each one of those videos published once a month, I explore different ink pad and embossing powder color options for Hero Arts color layering sets. In this video, I'm taking a closer look at the color layering baby penguin set and I have four color combo ideas to share, as well as three cards. So let's jump right in. This set has a one large baby penguin image with three separate layers, an outline as well as two detail layers. Because there is an outline image, you also have the ability to color this penguin using your favorite coloring medium, maybe markers, pencils, or watercolors. I'm not going to focus on the coloring today, but will only show you color layering ideas. I'm going to start with a Hero Arts suggested color combo for this set, which is black, charcoal, and soft granite. I'm using Misty's stamp positioning tool today to make it easier for me to align these images and double stamp them if needed. But these can be just as easily stamped using a regular clear block. Please do not feel like you need to use the Misty. It is helpful, but it is not mandatory. Depending on the stamp set, the design of the image, the number of layers, and also on the kind of ink you're using, it's sometimes best to stamp the outline layer first or last. I will show you both ideas today, or both ways today, and will explain when it is best to stamp the outline layer first and when last. For my first color combo, the Hero Arts Suggested Combo, I've started stamping my image by stamping the outline layer in black ink. Next, I'm aligning the first detail layer over my black stamped outline and stamping it in charcoal ink. So I'm going from the darkest to the lightest, and in this case, from the most detailed to the most solid layer. Again, I'm going to align the most detailed layer on my image and will stamp it using soft granite ink. And my first baby penguin is ready. Let's start working on the next one. I'm going to use black ink once again to stamp my outline, but we'll change the other two colors. I'm using black ombre ink pad to stamp the second layer, and I'm making sure to have the lightest color at the top of my penguin, so making sure his head is inked up in the lightest color of all the three colors that are included in the ombre pad, and his feet are inked up with the darkest color. To stamp the third layer, I'm going to use a silver ink. This is silver pigment ink from Hero Arts. Because pigment ink is formulated differently from dye ink, and up to this moment I've been using dye ink pads, the silver ink now sits on top of the previously stamped layers, making them a bit dull. So the black is no longer true black, it is muted a little bit. Here are the two penguins stamped side by side, and you can see the difference in black versus black with the silver ink on top of it. So in this particular case, when using pigment ink, it is best to start with a layer that is stamped in that pigment ink. So, the most solid layer. I purposely stamped this penguin incorrectly to show you the difference. To stamp it correctly, I'm going to start by stamping the most solid layer in silver ink. And you can see that this is a very faint color. And this is actually the look I'm going for with this color combo. I want the belly of my penguin to be very light gray. I'm going to align the second layer and we'll stamp it using soft granite. Now, it is a little bit more difficult to align these since the base layer is stamped in such light color of ink. So it is best to take your time and not rush when aligning the next layer over a very faint stamping to ensure best results. I need to mention that even though I'm not showing this on camera, I am cleaning my stamps. I'm not using a cleaning solution and I'm not scrub scrubbing them clean, but I am inking them up with whatever ink color I'm using next and stamping it off onto a piece of scrap paper to get rid of the residual ink on my stamp. And this doesn't matter as much when you're going from a light gray to a dark gray, but when you're switching from gray to brown or from gray to blue, this does matter. To stamp the outline layer, I first used the charcoal ink, but later stamped the same layer in black, and that seemed to be a better idea for this color combo. 
Because I started with the pigment ink and added dye ink on top of it, and not the other way around, my black remained true black, and you can see the difference here. I still have that very pale gray as my base layer, stamped with a silver pigment ink, but my black looks like a true black now. So this is a good example of when you need to start your image with the most solid layer first. Okay, moving on to the next combo. Once again, I'm going to stamp the outline in black and we'll stamp the first detail layer in soft granite. To add the last one, and by the way, you can also skip stamping the last detail layer. I often do this when I feel my image already looks good enough. So for the last most solid layer, I'm using soft sky ink to add a little bit of blue to my penguin. This is a very light blue and it will be even lighter when the ink dries. So I feel like this is a great color for a baby penguin. I have one last color combo to share today. Before doing my stamping, I researched the penguins and looked at different coloring options and came across beautiful brown baby penguins. So I pulled out my brown ink pads and stamped one penguin in brown. I used Cup of Joe for the outline. Next, I stamped the detail layer in brown ombre, again, making sure the lightest brown color was on the penguin's head and the darkest was on his feet. And finally, I stamped the most solid layer using soft brown. So don't feel like your penguins all have to be gray and black. They can be brown too, or they can have a hint of blue to their bellies. Here is a quick look at all of my stamped penguins today. I didn't show you number four as it didn't turn out quite the way I had hoped. I was uh, hoping to stamp the emperor penguin with a little bit of yellow, but I can't say that that worked out well. I used a coordinating die and cut all of my penguins out. I made three cards using these images and I'll quickly walk you through them. I used a brown penguin to make a Valentine's Day card. This penguin is saying I love you this much and he's holding a love letter for his sweetheart. There's a partial diagonal stamped XOXO in the background as well as a circle imitating a postage stamp. My penguin is all dressed up in a hat and a bow tie and these accessories as well as the white heat embossed sentiments come from the baby penguin stamp set. My next card features a penguin holding a hat in one hand, saying warm winter wishes. He is very handsome and I'd say he is ready to party. Finally, the last project features two penguins hugging each other and saying sending penguin hugs. They both have cute colorful bow ties stamped in green and blue to spice them up. A full list of supplies used for all three of these cards is available on the Hero Arts blog. So this finishes my video. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode from the Color Layering with Yana video series. Be sure to stop by next month for the next episode. And if you missed the first one featuring the Color Layering Fox, be sure to watch that as well. As always, if you have questions, please leave them in a the comment section on YouTube or on Hero Arts blog. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!